Think about this as a pixel, a flying pixel. This is what we call, in our lab, sensible design. Let me tell you a bit about it. Now, if you take this picture, I'm Italian originally, and uh, every boy in Italy grows up with this picture on the wall of his bedroom. <laughs> But the reason I'm showing you this is that um, something very interesting happened in Formula One racing over the past couple of decades. Now, some time ago, if you wanted to win a Formula One race, um, you take a budget and you bet your budget on a good driver and a good car. And if the car and the driver were good enough, then you win the race. Now, today, if you want to win the race, actually you need also something like this, something that uh, monitors the car in real time, has a few thousand sensors, collecting information from the car, transmitting this information into the system, and then processing it and using it in order to go back to the car with uh, decisions and changing things in real time as information is collected. This is what, in engineering terms, you would call a real-time control system. And basically, it's a system made of two components, a sensing and an actuating component. What is interesting today is that real-time control systems are entering, starting to enter into our life. Uh, our cities, over the past few years, just have been blanketed with networks, electronics. They're becoming like computers in open air. And as computers in open air, they're starting to respond in a different way, to be able to be sensed and to be actuated. If we fix cities, actually, it's a big deal. Just as an aside, I wanted to mention cities are only 2% of the Earth's class but they are 50% of the world's population. They are 75% of energy consumption, up to 80% of CO2 emissions. So if you're able to do something with cities, that's a, that's a big deal. Beyond cities, um, all of this sensing and actuating is entering our everyday objects. That's uh, from an exhibition that uh, Paolo Antonelli is uh, organizing at MoMA later this year, during the summer. It's called Talk to Me. Well, our objects, our environment is starting to talk back to us. In a certain sense, it's almost as if every atom out there were becoming both a sensor and an actuator. And that is radically changing the interaction we have as humans with the environment out there. In a certain sense, it's almost as if the old dream of Michelangelo. You know, when Michelangelo sculpted the Moses, at the end, it's said that he took the hammer, threw it at the Moses. Actually, you can still see a small chip on the knee. Uh, and said, shouted, perché non parli? Why don't you talk? Well, today, for the first time, our environment is starting to talk back to us. And I'll show just a few examples, again, with this idea of sensing our environment and actuating it. Let's start with sensing. Well, the first project I wanted to share with you is actually one of the first projects by our lab. It was four and a half years ago in Italy. And what we did there was actually use a new type of network at the time that had been deployed well, all across the world, that's a cell phone network, and use anonymous and aggregated information from that network that's collected anyway by the operator in order to understand how the city works. The summer was a lucky summer, 2006. It's when Italy won the Soccer World Cup. Uh, some of you might remember it was Italy and France playing, and then Zidane at the end, the head button. Anyway, Italy won at the end. Now, <laughs> look at what happened that day just by monitoring activity happening on the network. Here you see the city, you see the Colosseum in the middle, the river, Tevere. Uh, it's morning, before the match, you see the timeline on the top, early afternoon, people here and there making calls and moving. The match begins, silence, France scores, Italy scores, half time, people make a quick call and go to the bathroom. Um, second half, end of normal time, first overtime, second. Zidane the headbutt in a moment. <laughs> Italy wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that night everybody went to celebrate in the, in the center. You saw the big peak. The following day again, everybody went to the center to meet uh, the winning team and the prime minister at the time. And then everybody moved down. You sit in the image at a place called Circo Massimo, where since Roman times people go to celebrate, to have a big party and you see the peak at the end of today. Well, that's just one example how we can sense the city today in a way that we couldn't have done just a few years ago. Another quick example about sensing, it's about, not about people, but it's about things we use and consume. Well, today, we know everything about where our objects come from. Uh, this is a map that shows you all the chips that form a, 
Mac computer, how they came together, but we know very little about where thing goes. So in this project, we actually develop some small tags to track trash as it moves through the system. So we actually started with uh, a number of volunteers who helped us in Seattle just over a year ago to tag what they were throwing away, different type of things, as you can see here, things they would th throw away anyway. Then we put a little chip, little tag onto the trash, and then started following it. Here are the results we just obtained. From Seattle, after one week, With this information, we realize there's a lot of inefficiencies in the system. We can actually do the same thing with much less energy. Uh, this data was not available before, but there's a lot of wasted transportation and convoluted things happening. But the other thing is that we believe that actually, if we see every day that the cup we are throwing away, it doesn't disappear. It's still somewhere on the planet. And the plastic bottle we're throwing away every day still stays there, and we show that to people, then we can also promote some behavioral change. So that was the reason for the project. My colleague at MIT, Asaf Biderman, he could tell you much more about sensing and many other things, wonderful things we can do with sensing. But I wanted to go to the second part we discussed at the beginning, and that's actuating our environment. And the first project is something we did a couple of years ago in Zaragoza, Spain. It started with a question by the mayor of the city, who came to us saying that Spain and Southern Europe have a beautiful tradition of using water in public space, in architecture. And the question was, how could technology, new technology, be added to that? And one of the ideas was developed at MIT in a workshop was, imagine you got this pipe and you got uh, valves, uh, solenoid valves, tabs, opening and closing, you create like a water curtain with pixels made of water. Those pixels fall and you can write on it, you can show patterns, images, text, and even you can approach it and it will open up to let you uh, jump through, as you see in this image. Well, we presented this to Mayor Belloc, he liked it very much, and we got a um, commission to design a building at the entrance of the expo. We called it Digital Water Pavilion. The whole building is made of water. There's no doors or windows, but when you approach it, it will open up to let you in. The roof also is covered with water. And if there's a bit of wind, if you want to minimize splashing, you can actually lower the roof. Or you could uh, close the building and the whole architecture will uh, disappear, like in this case. You know, these days, I always get emails during the winter when they take the roof down of people who've been there and say, you know, they demolished the building. And uh, no, they didn't demolish it, just when it goes down, the, the architecture almost uh, disappears. Here's the building working. You see the person puzzled about what was going inside. Uh, here it was myself trying not to get wet, uh, testing the sensors that open the water. Well, I should tell you now what happened one night when all of the sensors stopped working. Uh, but actually, that night, uh, it was even more, f more fun. All the kids from Saragossa came to the building because the way of engaging with the building became something different. Not anymore a building that would open up to let you in, but a building that would still make cuts and holes through the water, and you had to jump without getting wet. <laughs> And that was, for us, was very interesting, because as architects, as engineers, as designers, we always think about how people will use the things we design, but then reality is always unpredictable, and that's the beauty of, of doing things that are used and interact with people. Here is an, an image, then, of the building with uh, the physical pixels, the pixels made of water, and then projections on them. And this is what led us to think about the following project I'll show you now, 
that's, imagine those pixels could actually start flying. Imagine, you know, you could have small helicopters uh, that move in the air, and then each of them with a small pixel and changing lights, almost as a cloud that can move in space. Here is the idea. So imagine one helicopter, like the one we saw before, moving with others in synchrony, so you can have this cloud. You can have a kind of flexible screen or display like this, a regular configuration in two dimensions. Or in uh, regular, but in three dimensions, where the thing that changes is the light, not the pixel's position. You can play with uh, different types. Imagine your screen could just appear and different scale or sizes, different type of resolution. But then the, the whole thing becomes just a 3D kind of cloud of pixel that you can approach and move through it and see from many, many directions. Here is the, the real fly fire control and going down from the regular grid as before. When you turn on the light, actually, you see this. So the same we saw before. And uh, imagine each of them then controlled by people. You can have each pixel having an input that comes from people, from people's movement or so on. So I wanted to show you something here for the first time. Is, uh, We've been working with uh, Roberto Bolle, one of today's top ballet dancers, the Etoile at uh, Metropolitan in New York and uh, La Scala in Milan, and actually captured his movement in 3D uh, in order to use it as an input for fly fire. And here you can see Roberto dancing. You see on the, le on the left the pixels, a different resolution being captured. It's both 3D scanning in real time and uh, motion capture. So you can reconstruct the whole movement. You can go all the way to... But then once you have the pixels, then you can play with them and play with uh, color and movement and gravity and uh, rotation. So we want to use this as one of the possible inputs for fly fire. show you the last project we are working on. It's something we're working on for the London Olympics. It's called the cloud. And the idea here is imagine that, again, you know, we can involve people in doing something, in changing our environment, in almost doing bar what we call cloud raising, like barn raising, but with a cloud. Imagine you can have everybody make a small donation for one pixel. And you know, I think what is remarkable that happens over the past couple of years is that over the past couple of decades, we went from the physical world to the digital one. This has been digitizing everything, knowledge, and making that accessible through the internet. Now, today, for the first time, and the Obama campaign showed us that, we can go from the digital world, from the self-organizing power of networks, to the physical one. You know, this can be, in our case, we want to use it for designing and doing a symbol, that doing something built in a city. But tomorrow, it can be in order to tackle today's pressing challenges, think about climate change or CO2 emission, how we can go from the digital world to the physical one. So the idea that can we actually involve people in doing this thing together collectively? The cloud is, uh, is a cloud, again, made of pixels, in the same way as a real cloud is a cloud made of particles. And those particles are water, where our cloud is a cloud of pixels, is a physical structure in London, but covered with pixels. You can move inside with different type of experiences. You can actually see it from underneath, sharing the main moments for the Olympics in 2012 and beyond and uh, really using it as a way to connect with the community, so both a um, physical cloud into the sky and uh, something you can go to the top, like a London's new mountain top. Uh, you can enter inside it 
and uh, a kind of new digital beacon for the night, but most importantly, a new type of experience for anybody who will go to the top. Thank you.